Good morning, everybody. Today is December 14th, 2020. We are 108 days away from the scheduled opening day, and it's been kind of a slow off season. The Yankees have yet to make any major moves. So I feel like the ripple effects from the Corona ball season and all the money that teams lost is kind of going to cause this off season to develop a lot more slowly uh, because a lot of teams just don't have the money to spend and a lot of players still feel like they should earn market value. So we'll see which way that goes. In the meantime, I wanted to talk a little bit about some guys that the Yankees already have that I'm excited about for 2021. Uh, first will be Davey Garcia, who is still the rookie eligible and might be my pick for my 2021 Rookie of the Year award. We'll see. Uh, also, I'll talk about how far apart the Yankees are with DJ LeMahieu and whether or not that will get done. Uh, Clint Frazier seems to have made major strides in his game over the past year. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do over the course of a full season. It looks like he's going to be the Yankees' left fielder unless they go out and get a left-handed bat. But in my opinion, Clint Frazier has earned the left field job uh, regardless of what side of the plate he hits from. Also, the Cleveland Indians are changing their name, which ruins one of my favorite movies of all time, Major League. And then also, I'll go over the career of Paul O'Neill. I talked about this when I first started my channel, but because it's such an old video, nobody really ever saw it. Uh, I wanted to talk about whether or not the Yankees should retire number 21. Nobody ever wears it. Paul O'Neill has already got a plaque in Monument Park. So will they retire his number or not? Why are you not giving it out to anybody? We'll talk about it. So I read that Davey Garcia is actually pitching in winter ball this year with the Tigres de Lice. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Probably didn't. Uh, but there's some other major league caliber players on that team. Emilio Bonifacio is on that team. Wellington Castillo is on that team. Sandy Leone is on that team. And I think that it's great that Davey Garcia is getting a little bit of extra experience this winter, you know, learning from some other big league players. I think he was very impressive when he first came up. Now, one of the things that stood out to me the most about Davey Garcia is that he didn't seem to be affected by being just 21 years old and being at the big league level. You know, he didn't seem to nibble. He went right after hitters. He didn't seem nervous. Just by looking at his face and his body language, he seemed cocky. He seemed, that might be the wrong word. He seemed very confident. He seemed very established. And it's raining pretty heavy here, so sorry if there's some background noise. But a lot of times when pitchers come up to the big leagues, they nibble around the strike zone. They're afraid of getting hit hard. Look at what Clark Schmidt did. Now, part of that is probably his mechanics, but even good control pitchers like Ian Kennedy really nibbled around the strike zone when he first got to the big leagues. Eventually, he got confident. He won 21 games in the National League. But guys are afraid of getting hit hard and getting sent back down to the minor leagues. But Davey Garcia showed no fear. The fact that he was so poised when he first got to the big leagues at such a young age is a great sign for his future. Uh, and that's before we even start talking about his stuff, which is pretty good. Having the mental aspect already down, or at least appearing like you have it down, means that the Yankees organization doesn't need to spend a lot of time developing confidence in this kid. He's already got it. One of the guys that he got compared to as a minor leaguer was Pedro Martinez. And part of that is because they're both from the same area, the Dominican Republic. They both are short right-handers, under six feet tall with upper 90s fastball. So I get it. I get the comparisons. But that's not who Davey Garcia reminds me of when I see him. Who he really reminds me of, and I know this is going to sound crazy, is Mariano Rivera. Just his attitude on the mound where we saw him get hit a couple of times. We saw Mariano get hit a couple of times early in his career. We saw Davey get hit a couple of times early in his career. And they bounce right back and go right back to executing the game plan. They're both guys with pretty clean mechanics who have a really good whip-like action on their arm. And the poise. Mariano Rivera was notoriously unflappable to the point where he had an unbelievable ERA throughout his postseason career. I think it was barely over one. I'm not looking right at it, so uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll put it on the screen. But Mariano Rivera was notoriously unflappable, very poised. And Davey Garcia reminds me 
of that type of pitcher. They, I'm not saying that they're the same pitcher or that Davey Garcia is destined to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm just saying that mentally and down to the way they approach the game, Davey Garcia reminds me more of Mariano Rivera than he reminds me of Pedro Martinez. If you look at Davey Garcia's metrics on baseball savant uh, and where he ranked against the rest of the league, it's really not that impressive yet. His exit velocity against was only in the 29th percentile. His swing and miss percentage or whiff percentage was only in the 23rd percentile. His batting average against or expected batting average against was only in the 18th percentile. Fastball only in the 34th percentile. Fastball spin 30th percentile. You can see though, very good command, 94th percentile. And his curve has very nice spin in the 71st percentile. So a lot of room for Davey Garcia to get better. And that's something that will get better with time. I don't know if his fastball velocity is going to go up. He really seems like he can throw harder, but he doesn't seem to be throwing at max effort. We've seen him throw harder in the past. So I'm encouraged that Davey Garcia has a lot of room for improvement. We'll see how it works out. But right now, I feel like Davey Garcia is going to be a very nice pitcher in the big leagues. Can we give him a number better than 83, though? 83 is the number you give to somebody who you're going to cut in spring training, not somebody who's going to be in your rotation. Let's give him a lower number. Let's give him something like, I don't know, 33. The Yankees appear to be playing hardball with DJ LeMahieu, their team MVP for the past two seasons. He's seeking a five-year, $100 million contract, and that would be about $20 million per season. The Yankees appear to be offering four years and about 75 million that would be about 18.75 per season uh, and about 25 million dollars over the life of the contract now that might not seem like a big obstacle to overcome but that last year of a player's contract is very important to them because that extends their career especially when they're in their 30s depending on the length of the contract that he gets this winter He'll be either 36 or 37 the next time he's a free agent, and he's probably worried about getting another contract, which, you know, I don't blame him. He's going to be nearing the end of his career. I think DJ LeMay, who could be the type of guy, though, that could play well into his early 40s, just the type of player he is, and based on other guys who I've seen do it, Cal Ripken, he seems like that type of player. That might be one of the reasons that you haven't seen the Yankees spend any other money, really, other than bringing back Zach Britton, which, great move, by the way. But depending on what LeMahieu does, if he signs with somebody like the Blue Jays, who are interested, uh, or the Mets, who have an opening, then that frees up the money that you were going to spend, that $18 million. There's no telling how much other additional money the Yankees have to spend beyond that, but having that money available could really change the way that your offseason maneuvers could change the path that you end up taking to your 2021 roster so keep a close eye on this. I hope LeMahieu comes back, but if he doesn't, you still have the opportunity to go out and get somebody like Francisco Lindor, which I feel like Brian Cashman is kind of keeping that conversation going on the back burner with the team formerly known as the Indians. That's right. The Cleveland Indians are changing their name. Now, I get that uh, Indians can be offensive to some people. I have some Native American heritage in me. I am not offended by it. But I'm a little offended that my favorite baseball movie, Major League, is going to be a little bit different now, uh, that the Indians are no longer going to be a team. Now, I guess ch teams change all the time. The Expos are now the Nationals. Uh, there used to be, like, the Senators in Washington. Uh, there was the Milwaukee Braves. You know, teams move, teams change. But it feels like the end of an era. Uh, and I'm sorry to see the Indians go. I like their Chief Wahoo logo, even though I get it's a little offensive. I find it uh, fun. I think it's a fun logo. And as somebody who has the Native American heritage, I'm just not offended by the name Indians. Speaking of the team formerly known as the Indians, they originally drafted Clint Frazier. He was actually drafted in the first round, fifth overall in the 2013 amateur draft. He was traded to the Yankees as part of the Andrew Miller trade in 2016 that worked out for the Indians. They ended up making the World Series. Clint Frazier got off to a pretty good start with the Yankees, but then was kind of up and down over the past few years. But I think he's finally earned a spot at the Major League level. Who could have predicted after the defensive woes 
that he had in 2019 that he would be a gold glove finalist in 2020 and that's exactly what he was he also showed a bit of pop he had eight home runs and 131 at bats that's a 905 ops 267 average 394 on base percentage he was not afraid to take pitches he walked 25 times in 160 plate appearances and i get it the yankees could use some more left-handed hitting i've seen michael brantley's name kind of thrown about uh dd gregorius i feel like letting him go in the first place was probably a mistake but I don't think you need to replace Clint Frazier with a left-handed bat. I just don't. I think that he's going to hit both righties and lefties. His bat speed is such that he can lay off of the breaking ball from a righty a little bit longer. He doesn't have to start his swing as soon as other guys because he's got so much bat speed. So he doesn't need to cheat on the fastball. He can wait a little bit and identify the spin and lay off that breaking ball which kind of nullifies the effect that a good right-handed pitcher would have against him. Now, I know that Gardner got most of the starts out there in left field during the postseason. He also played pretty well. Uh, so you may see them bring Gardner back, though I don't think so. It really depends on what happens with DJ LeMahieu and those funds. But I would feel totally comfortable giving Clint Frazier the left field job next season. I think he's earned it. He's gotten better defensively. He's shown that he's a good offensive player. He's got a good arm. He's become much more of a team first guy. And I just really am enamored with the way that Clint Frazier uh, has become a real Yankee over the past year. And the final topic, because it is a slow winter's day. Last time we talked about the facial hair rule. This time I want to talk about Paul O'Neill. I can't believe it's been 20 years since Paul O'Neill's final season with the Yankees 2001 he's one of my favorite all-time Yankees he wore number 21 he was nicknamed the warrior he was extremely clutch he was a great personality as you see on the on the uh, yes network he was a fiery guy like to smash water coolers I think it's interesting that his number 21 hasn't been retired but it's only been issued twice since he retired it's like they're waiting to give it to the right person you know maybe it'll go to Jason Dominguez or somebody of that ilk you know, who's a, a top prospect or, or someone like that. I don't think it would be right to give it to somebody outside of the organization. You know, sometimes I feel like the Yankees should go ahead and retire his numbers. Sometimes I don't. The Yankees do have a lot of numbers retired. And, you know, like I said, it's weird to see guys wearing number 83 in the game. So maybe you need to be a little bit more I don't know, judicious with how you retire numbers. And maybe that's what the Yankees are doing. Uh, but Paul O'Neill was certainly a legend. And I just find it odd that he has a plaque in Monument Park but did not get his number retired. Tell me what you think in the comments, whether or not you would retire Paul O'Neill's number 21 or whether or not you would hand it out and to whom you think the Yankees should hand it out to. Uh, I'll be back if and when something happens this offseason. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. Sponsorships are always available, so feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at NYY Recaps. Thanks for watching.